So welcome back to more coding for Bitwig and we're looking still into the hardware API. Actually, I wanted to look in that part how to address text displays and graphic displays and LED knobs and all that stuff. But I noticed that it's impossible with JavaScript to create an instance of a color. And that's pretty bad because color is something very essential for output. There is hope that there might be a helper function in the future maybe in a 3.2 beta cycle but that's not for sure so what we absolutely need to do now is to switch over to java which you should do anyway but i try to also give you an idea about the javascript way if you have no idea about bitwig and java look into part number nine and part number ten this is here i can show you so my tutorial part nine is developing with java and part ten is about looking into using an IDE with Eclipse, so also developing with Java. Absolutely watch that before that part. How do you do that? So I have not prepared that. So we do that really now on the fly and let's see how we can cope with that. So let's go to the help section. If you remember, that's the way in the documentation where you can create new projects and you can create Java project. And we call this like before hardware AP. I test we are in number three the window is me and the version is wonder though we go to final release straight away and we need a MIDI input and we also need the output later on because we want to output something and let's write that directly here in the output repository so we have the path to class name yeah why not package uh, yeah whatever it doesn't matter and also that is not really meaningful so let's see if we got something directly import that into eclipse so there is my eclipse workspace you can simply say let's go for import and we have an existing maven project and we just need to select here the path as well here it is and we say okay and okay and here we have our project which is pretty empty so first let's check out the pom file and in the pom file you see i'm using here the 3 to 2 beta so it went straight to 11 you can use 10 instead which is final but 11 is also fine for the time being i showed you also the trick in the other video how to copy it straight into the correct directory but we also leave it that way and skip that for the moment something also to need to be aware of is that now with 3.1 and api 10 you need to use the jdk version 12 which is a bit of an odd choice so you should go here to use the adopt open jdk version and there is you see a version 12 is still gone because long-term support is 11 and the other ones are just cranked up but you can still if you choose here other platforms you can pick still number 12 and then you can download the correct version whichever platform you're on is and use uh, that one if you watch that video later you should always check what is the actual required version you will quickly notice if you look at the bitwig jar which is included which version that was compiled with um so just to be sure if you get a strange error when compiling that you have different class versions then this is the absolute indicator that you are using the wrong version so let's go for that and let's try to run the pom file immediately so i just here duplicate an existing one and say okay this is hard where test three and we need to select the correct project here we go and the rest should be fine so let's apply and run that so and we got the results file here's the target so we have here the extension let's check that out straight away so let's copy that in it is already running it should be there so let's check that out so let's have a look here it should be here hardware abs three so it's here we have input and an output and we can select anything just to make it happen okay so this is already running nicely and what we now will simply do let's open the main file is 
copy in the JavaScript code and let's try to modify that. So where is the JavaScript code? Here it is. So remember, this is the stuff we did last time. Simply copy everything over. Here is also the init function. And in the init function, let's remove that stuff here. We do not really need that one. So let's also get rid of that. And here we have all the code. This is just some configuration stuff. Let's create some variables out of that. This is all integers. Um, this is the engine can simply help us with that. So we can just replace that with the correct types. So that one too, that one too. So that's all we got. So basically that's it. And it seems to look good. You can also call here cleanup source cleanup. And then you have also the notifications gun. And what is that here is not used yet. Yeah, that's correct, but we don't need that right now. So this should also now work. So let's compile that. Okay, it went through. Let's copy the extension over and it should get picked up again by Bitwig. And it has got initialized. So now we should also have here the simulated GUI. And as you see, we have the same stuff here as before in the previous JavaScript tutorial. So as you see, the conversion is very, very easy and straightforward to do. So since looking into output as well would be too much for this tutorial. So I thought I show you also two other things which I did not mention yet. You have also two options to combine elements, which one thing is that also knobs sometimes are touch enabled. So you get also, for example, a MIDI node if you touch them. This is one thing you can do. Any other thing is knobs can also be pressed sometimes. So there are also normally a MIDI event or a CC event is set. And this can also be created here with Bitwig, you can say, for example, where do we have a knob? Uh, here, for example, is a relative knob. And if you look now here at the available methods and functions, um, this is now much nicer in Java. You get all the available stuff right here. Looking here at that, you see there is a button as well. And there is also, where is it? So here is the end touch action. This is when the, the user released it one and the other one is begin touch action. And the action is the same as uh, with the buttons we had up here. So you can also use here uh, that to add a binding to what should happen if the user touches that thing. So you add a hardware binder, bindable the same way as you had here. Bind the controls, here is a button. So this is a pressed action, so very we also had the set action matcher and to create a CC matcher. So you need to map that as well to that action. And here on the controls action binding, there is where we see the button here. So here you set the binding to an action. You could do the same way with that action. So it's the same object. It's an action object, which you can use as well. And I'll leave it just for you in, let's see, put it to the Braille knob so you can get an idea for the begin touch action and for the end touch action, you could do the same stuff as above. Use these actions to find to no touch event. So the same as above. There you also, as a reminder that you need to do that here as well, you need to do that here as well to have the binding for the actual action. Chen. The other thing with the click is, as I said, also you can have here this relative knob and you have the hardware button here and you have the set hardware button. So you can create a hardware button as we did here above with the play button and you can simply assign it to this rel knob and then it will not appear as a separate button but it will simply be a clickable knob. So you can also click on the knob to execute that action. And I also... If you want to create a clickable button, do it like this. So these were just the two hints I wanted to show you as well. And I think we leave it with that and 
then really next time we can finally look into creating output. And until then, write some funky code.